three weeks suspension, huh? Without pay. I guess that means you won't be coming around to me for waterfront information for a while. As a matter of fact, I need you now more than ever, Tom. Oh, come. I think you'd want to take it easy. Maybe do a little pier fishing, you know? But I gotta prove something. Clear my name. Okay, how can I help? Remember the picture I gave you of that little mystery man of mine? Yeah, I haven't seen him, though. I got a hunch he's not even in Port Charles anymore. Could be hiding. No, no, I don't think so. I would have heard something about that. You haven't? No. But then you gotta realize there are some things that go on here I don't hear about. Well, yeah, not much, I bet. Well, some. There's an APB out on the guy. Well, if a guy like that doesn't want to be found, he won't be found, kid. Is there anything on Tessie? Yeah, I hear that she's uh, due in tomorrow. No kidding. No, that's right here. Let me ask you something. Have you heard anything about Tessie being involved in the underworld here on the waterfront? No. Well, you know, she is a smart old bird. So you're saying that if she was involved, she wouldn't necessarily tell anybody about it? Yeah, well, you know, my big shop gives me a window on the whole waterfront. I see the bad and the good. But I've never connected her with anything bad. You keep your eye on that window, okay? Hmm. Tessie just may be the key to something... something she doesn't even know about. Mm, could be. I got this gut feeling she could lead us to what's going on down here on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. You damn near blew our whole operation, Tuffy. What are you talking about? What did I do? You used your key to come in the back door of this building and you were spotted by Frisco Jones. I was? You were. Now, from now on, we have to keep up an appearance of doing union business and union business only. And for your information, I've already changed the lock so you can throw away your key. Okay. Okay, I'll get rid of it. We can't make mistakes in this business. I guess none of us can. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. Look, you're through with me, and I, uh, I gotta go make arrangements for Tessie's docking tomorrow. You've been talking to Damon? Well, we speak now and then, yeah. I've already told them we can't handle that much cash here in Port Charles. He's a tough man to say no to, you know? Oh, I'll say no all the way to the top if I have to, because I intend to be out of this phase of the operation in four weeks. You still sorting me? No. I'm sorry about something else. Port Charles is my city. At least for the next four weeks. I don't want you to forget that. I won't, boys. See you later. I'm sorry. Hello, Sam. How are you, Tuffy? Damn it, Damon. You owe me an explanation. About what? For setting Frisco Jones up in that poker game. I know you were at the bottom of that. I don't think I owe you an explanation about anything. Port Charles is still my town. You can't take action like that without first consulting me. There is no consulting where Mr. B is concerned. You ought to know that by now. He learned that the rookie cop was a threat to our laundering operation. He ordered something done about it. I did it. And now the rookie's off the police force for three weeks. That uh, suspension probably saved his life. Oh, so now you think he's off our backs? Well, for at least three weeks. Just the same, I'd keep an eye on him. Ought to be easy enough for you to do. His wife works for you. I presume she likes you. Probably even trusts you. Now, do you suppose we could finish the conversation we were having when she interrupted us this morning? Yes. I want to know more about these plans. Well, tomorrow will be Tessie's last run. Go on. At the end of this week, we shift to plan B so we can double the intake of a cash. I already told you it's too fast. Uh, you can tell me, but it won't change anything. Hmm? The schedules have been set up. The machines for transport will be here by the end of the week. I've already had Tuffy speak to Tessie and tell her that we're not going to be using her boat for the drop-offs anymore, at least for a while, because the plan got too hot. You're making a mistake. I would suggest that you don't let your opinions reach the ears of Mr. B. You've got to tell Mr. B that Port Charles is too small to handle that kind of cash. And if you don't tell him, I certainly will. And his answer will be, yes, it can. And then, where will you be? Oh, let me tell you where I'll be. 
If I get caught, I'll be in jail. We have the best lawyers in the country. And if I go to jail, this whole operation will then crumble. And if I'm in jail, you'll all be in jail. Not if you keep your mouth shut and follow orders. Hmm? Mr. B hasn't done so badly by you so far, has he? Your back's up against the wall, Lavery. You don't have any choice. General Hospital will continue in a moment. Oh, thanks, Emily. <laughs> Oh, here he is, Tanya. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, he is adorable. Felicia, you've got to look at these. Look at this. <laughs> look at the little belly on that. Isn't Ooh, it cool? I could just eat him up. <laughs> when you have your baby, you have Felicia right Ooh. in the same building. <laughs> I know, that's great, because you're so good with kids. No, I don't think I'm good with anything today. I know you're trying to keep my mind off of what happened to Frisco. Oh, his suspension will be over in three weeks. It's not the end of the world. No, you don't know. I just have this awful feeling that all the cops' wives are just going to say, I told you so. Don't you believe that for one second. When something goes wrong, we all stick together. We're not all perfect. But when there's trouble, it brings out the best in all the wives. Oh, oh Mrs. Lewis. It's Maggie. And if you don't feel like cooking, it's a one-dish meal. Oh, I'm, I'm so... I mean, thank you. Hi, Hi. Nina, Tanya. Hi. Yeah, put it down. I want to tell you a story. Story? Now, you all know my husband, the uh, tough, by-the-book Captain Lewis. Mm -hmm. Well, he was once an over-anxious rookie, just like any other rookie. Even like Frisco? He was probably more like Frisco than anybody I know. And if he finds out I'm telling you this story... Well, anyway, talk about over-anxious. He sees this woman on the street and thinks she's soliciting. And he wants to make his first caller, and he thinks this is it. He doesn't listen to her story, that she's soliciting political backing for her husband. Guy grabs her, and he drags her to the police station and proudly announces his first caller. The woman is the mayor's wife. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the truth. He didn't. He did. Oh. It was then that I decided that I had to take him in hand and manage him. I mean, let's face it, we're the brains behind the badge. Yeah. Felicia, yeah. you just have to take Frisco in hand. How is it with doctor's wives? The same. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I might find you here. Somebody told you about what happened today, huh? Tanya. Yeah. It's pretty humiliating. I sort of think irresponsible is a better word for it. <laughs> Yeah, well, when are you going to start taking it one step at a time? Tony, you don't know anything about it. People I graduated with from the academy, I mean, they all have collars. I have zero. Big deal. Yeah. Yeah, it is a big deal to me. Well, did they call you on the carpet because you didn't make an arrest? I didn't think so. So why don't you tell me what happened so I don't have to think the worst? Tony, I'm on to something down here. And I have a feeling it's going to be big. I just can't put my finger on what it is yet. Okay, so what'd you do to get in so much trouble? Well, I went, I went solo on this one part of the investigation. I broke a few rules, too, I guess. Didn't being a cop important enough for you to follow a few rules? Well, sure it's important to me. But I became a cop to help people, Tony. Now, that may sound stupid to you, but that's what I believe in. It doesn't sound stupid to me at all. It sounds great. I broke some rules because I had to. Because my instincts tell me that there's dirty pool going on down here, and it's a big game. And they put these rules on me to tell me I can't do what I feel I have to do. What happens to you? You're a doctor. 
When you believe something, when your instincts tell you something and there's rules confining you, what do you do? It happens to me sometimes and I check my instincts and I recheck them before I act. Whatever it is, Tony, it's big. I was set up to be framed. You know what that means? That means somebody's feeling the heat from me. Listen, maybe they suspended you for your own good then. Maybe they're trying to protect you. Maybe that's what some of those rules are for. On the other hand, if I'm a cop, isn't it my business to take risks? I don't know, that really puts me in the middle. Well, explain it to me. How do you feel? Well, part of me thinks the department's right in coming down on you. And the other part of me has so much faith in you. You mean that, don't you? Yeah. I really do mean that.